Praise the Lord. Well, this morning, I welcome you to Tabernacle of Yeshua. My name is Pastor Anthony Edwards. I'm the Senior Minister of, of Tabernacle of Yeshua. And today, we welcome you to hear the word of the Lord, that you may be refreshed and I may be refreshed. But there are some things that will, the Spirit of God will bring understanding of his word. And I just thank the Lord for this day. And as I pray, I ask that the Holy Spirit would guide and teach me through his word. Father, once again, we thank you for this awesome day. And Lord, we're so ever grateful to come in union with you, Lord, to be one, Father. The ultimate goal, Lord, that we may be sons in your kingdom. And Father, I pray, Lord, that the nation of Australia may have eyes to see and ears to hear the prophetic. For such a time as now, Lord, that we just ask that there is so much that is happening in the nation around the world. And truly, Lord God, that we need to be connected back to the cornerstone. And Father God, I pray this morning, let your word settle every issue today, Lord, because, Lord, we want to hear the truth of your word. Truth comes by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I thank you. Guide me through the word today, Lord, that we may have ears to hear and eyes to see the prophetic word of God today. And I commit this day, Lord, in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Well, welcome this morning. Um, I'm going to be sharing out the books of Kings this morning as the uh, prophet Elijah. And when you read verse 17, it says that Elijah, the prophet of God, he had to hear the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord came and said, now go eastward to the book. Well, at that time, the book was overflowing. And that speaks about life. When everything is flowing, you know life exists there. And I want to encourage this morning, God, in the word of God, it says God commanded a raven to feed you there. A divine action of God. God uses an unclean bird to feed the man of God in the time to sustain him in the land. And the raven speaks about an unclean bird. And this morning, I want to share that when God commands everything, he sets down the rules and boundaries that you and I may operate in. And I praise God that we are now in this feast that God has set boundaries and limitation in the boundaries of tabernacle. And uh, when God spoke to Adam in the garden of Genesis 2.16, he said, every, every tree of the garden you may eat, eat, eat freely. So in other words, God is giving you and I choices in life. How do, we work, how do we go through this time of a day of atonement that is upon the church? The raven brought Elijah, the man of God, brought him bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the book. That just tells me that Elijah the prophet was separated, he had provision, and he had the presence of God there to sustain him for this season that he was in. And sometimes we have to go to the place of separation where God can minister to us individually. This is a personal walk now to enter in, to enter into the narrow gate. And my encouragement to the church today that while God sustained Elijah, the man of God, in that time and season, there was, there was provision there. And the psalmist, and, and when I looked at this word and the meat and the bread, I just want to add a little bit more flavor to this word this morning. In the book of Psalms uh, 104 verse 15, Let's turn there this morning. 
And it says these very powerful words that um, God is speaking. And it says, and the wine in verse 15, and the wine that makes glad the heart of man, all to make his face shine, the bread which strengthens the man's heart. But I love verse 16, and it says this, powerful, the trees of the Lord are filled with sap, the cedar and the, of Lebanon, which is planted. I, I just love this verse. There's so much in this content. He's speaking about a people. And the word wine that maketh glad the heart of man, it, is, uh, it, is, it, it, it strengthens your heart to believe the word of God. The unfermented wine speaks of true teaching, the true word of God that can stable your heart in this time and season that we are in. Fermented wine is false teaching. You know, uh, we hear so many uh, teachings that are coming out, not out of, out of the Spirit of God, but it's coming out of the soulish realm. You know, uh, we take uh, things in the natural and we try and interpret, but God's not in it. God's not in it. Everything must come by the way of the Spirit of God. I want to encourage you this morning that uh, we need this Holy Spirit more and more each day in our life to give us direction and guidance. And the psalmist said in 119 verse 140, he says this, your word is very pure, therefore your servant loves me. Amen. When you get the un uh, the true word of God, it causes, a, it causes you to love it more and more each day. I want to speak about the area of the oil. The oil, face to face, it brings you into a place of brilliancy and sh you begin to glow and shine because the, the Holy Spirit is the anointing that brightens up your countenance this morning. And I just want to, uh, we need the uh, anointing, we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit to lead us into that narrow path that leads to life. It leads to life. The way that uh, is wide leads to what? Destruction. There are many that are on the road of destruction. It's not talking about those that are outside of the church. It's talking about those that are in the church of the living God this morning. Praise God. I want to share a little bit about the bread. The bread strengthens man's heart. You know, uh, every, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, hallelujah, that's that face-to-face -face realm, breathing freshness of the word of God into our spirit, face-to-face spirit to spirit this morning and that's what God has uh, provided for you and I like the man of God Elijah Elijah you know God provided those things that he may sustain him for this time and period and I thank God you know he had two meals he had the morning and evening meals that God provided for him and he drank from the book it was overflowing you know and I praise God that the word of God is overflowing in this house that we may drink the true word of God that it may transform us into the likeness of Christ. Amen. We talked about these three feasts. We had Passover. We had Pentecost. Now the season is upon the church that we may enter in to the Feast of Tabernacles. Amen. The door is open for each and every one of us to enter in to the narrow gate. Amen. It speaks about that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. That's our grounding scripture that we have been ministering out of. Apostle Brian, Pastor Manny, and others, Pastor Selena, have been ministering. We've got to go through the narrow gate to realize that's where life is. Amen. When you come to the gate, 
You got to take off the old wine skin. You got to take off all those things that you've been taught. This is a new day. We're entering in into the kingdom of God. It has boundaries. It has rules. It has everything to transform you to become a son. Pentecost couldn't do it. Pentecost was there to empower you with the Holy Spirit. And God doesn't want you to stay there. God doesn't want you just to, just to uh, be satisfied in that place. God wants you to move in to the place of perfection. God is going to deal with that nature that is in the core of our soul. God is going to annihilate that by the fiery word of God. And as you and I go through the narrow gate, though it seems hard, though it seems a separation, though it seems, but the end shall be great. Job knew that. Job knew that in the word of God. Job had to be tested. He had to go through the tribulation. He went through things that he, he could have threw in the towel, but he hanged on to the word of God. His end was greater. Hallelujah. And God wants your end to be greater, that you may be a son in God's kingdom this morning. If you can hear the spirit of the word today, enter in through the narrow gate. Hallelujah. There's another feast that is upon the earth, and God is saying, enter in to the place of life, the place of transformation, the place that you become a son. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited because Elijah, he, 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 he could have uh, he could have gave up, but God had provision. God had the bread. He had the meat. He, 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 he commanded the raven to feed the man of God. And don't you think God today, he will provide the food, the substance that you and I may go through the narrow gate this morning. And I praise God. Religion dries up the bone. Yeah, you know, uh, when your bone is dry, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't perform or get the blood cells moving. Sometimes tradition of man dries up the bone. You know, uh, we can sit in church and, you know, the kings of the earth are preaching word and they're out of boundaries. They're not in this narrow way to minister the prophetic word of God and they say so many things and they interpret things in the natural and try to uh, bring it around in the spirit, but they can't because they're ministering from the soulish realms. And God is now going to annihilate that air area in his church that his church may enter through the narrow gate this morning and Psalms are, and, and that Psalms 190 and 140 what a beautiful thing you know when we get the truth of God's word when we're rooted in the truth of God's word this morning we only can produce truth we only can pre, uh, produce the fruit and character what God wants us in our lives the fruit of the Spirit of God this morning. And uh, I'm so blessed that we are going through the season to be tested. What is inside of the earthen vessel? What do you hold? What do you put value on this morning? Do you put it on man? You, do you put your trust in man? I tell you now, man will always fail you, but God is faithful to bring you through. I put my trust in the Lord this morning. He is my roof for you. He is my helper in the needs of trouble. And that's who I put my trust in this morning. Don't believe every word that man says because the only word that you can believe is believe the word of God this morning. And my encouragement, my encouragement this morning that you may get ears to hear, eyes to see this morning through the Spirit of God, that you may hear the prophetic word that is thundering over the earth this morning. You are the earth. You was created out of the dust of the earth. You were destined for greater things in the things of God as you pursue to go through the narrow gate. And as you go through, you got to take off 
the old wineskin. Hallelujah. Because this new wine that we are going to receive, we're going to have to have a different cloth. We're going to have to have a new wineskin that can contain the new wine that God has for his church. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. Hallelujah. And that word cedar means, uh, it means to be firm, be strong in the Lord God Almighty. It tender roots. They're tender. They are going deep within you. I'm rooted in God's love this morning. When you're rooted in God's love this morning, you will only speak truth this morning. And sometimes people don't want to hear truth. But I'm telling you this morning, it's a day to be awoken by the spirit of truth this morning. Every man's got their teaching. Every man's got their doctrine. But I tell you what, when you enter into the kingdom, there's only one true doctrine. It is the word of God. It is unveiled to the church to enter in. I dwelt there. I've been there. But now we're entering into the narrow gate. Can I get an amen this morning? Praise God. Let your tender roots be rooted in the love of God that I may have power, that I may have beauty and royalty. Amen. Because I'm rooted in God's love. God wants you to be a, a lampstand shining forth in a dark area this morning. And God is bringing that freshman to the church now. What is your choice this morning? Are you going to be like everyone else to go to, go down the wide uh, road or the road that leads to destruction? It's your choice this morning. But Joshua said these powerful words. He said, but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm going through with it because at the end, I become a son. At the end, I will get his approval. At the end, I am like my Jesus. When you see me, I'm like him. Hallelujah. Transformation is taking place in your life because he abides within. Amen. Remain in him this morning. Remain in him that you may be anchored in the truth of his word this morning. And that's what the cedar means. It means to be firm and strong. Hallelujah. There are many people that are knocked all around. Uh, they, uh, when crisis come, they walk out. But don't walk out. Stay in it that you may go through your testing time. Lebanon speaks about the whiteness. The mountains of Lebanon snow on, on the mountain, symbolic of the whiteness and the righteousness and the holiness. That's what we're going to have to be. Be ye holy as he is holy. There can't be any gray areas in our walk with God. God is going to do it regardless if you're coming along. He's going to clean the church up. We can't, we can't uh, live in and out of the things of God. We've got to be firm in God. We've got to go through the narrow gate. And my, my word this morning to the church, to the kings of the earth, check your heart. Search your heart out. Have I studied these areas of the Feast of Tabernacle? Have I sent a warning out to my people? Have I, have I allowed them to sit under rain? The rain, the teaching of his word in Deuteronomy verse 32, chapter uh, 32 verse 2. Let my teaching fall as what? Rain. The word, it's raining over the earth. I'm not talking about the natural rain. I'm talking about the spiritual rain of God's word is raining on a people that we may be washed in this hour that God is pouring out upon the earth this morning. Don't settle for second best. Don't just uh, uh, take your walk lightly. It is, it, it is much greater for you to know what God has in store for you, your inheritance, 
that you may become a saint, that you may rule and reign with him this morning. But there's a process. There's a cleaning up in the church. And today, it's sad to say, there's, there's no life in the Spirit of God in the church. Man, man is speaking everything that is irrelevant for this move. I want to stay there. I want to be comfortable in my, in my, uh, where I sit. Now, God doesn't want you to be comfortable in this move. God wants you to rise, stand up, be firm, and walk into the narrow gate. That word Lebanon, beautiful, whiteness, righteousness and holiness, a white garment. It's a sign of purity of the soul. That's why God's going after the soulish realm. We've got too many ties. We've got too much time doing everything else. And we put off our salvation. We put off the very thing that's going to lead us into life. You're not saved till you get to the end. You're not approved till you get to the end. Everyone says, oh, I'm saved. You've been saved, what, 40 years? And you're not living the life that God wants you to live? You're not going through the narrow gate. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm, I'm singing all these songs. But you know what, my friend, the saddest day that you only approve when you get to the end. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter in, enter in to the joy of the Lord. You want joy? Enter in. Enter into the kingdom of God this morning. Don't be a one day wonder waiting for a trumpet to blow. It ain't going to happen. This is all spiritual. Elijah, the man of God, heard the prophetic word. Go to the book and I will refresh you. I will sustain you in the midst of separation. Sometimes separation is good. That's when it comes personal. That's when it comes inward in your life that you can examine yourself before the Almighty God. Lord, I want to examine everything in my life. Lord, I, I, my vessel is dirty. It needs a washing. It needs a cleansing. Separation is good. He had provision. He had the presence of God that outstands and outweigh every famine that you're going through this morning. That's why Moses said, he said, Lord, I will not go up from here unless what? Your presence. We need the presence of the Almighty God to lead us in. This is the way to walk in. This is the way. Lord, change my uh, conduct. Change my life, Lord, that I may be in the way of the Lord. Amen. Say, so, and, and when I begin to look at this white, it speaks about a white garment. You know, a white garment is only worn in the Feast of Tabernacle. Special occasion. There is going to be a day that we're going to celebrate with our Lord and Saviour. Don't miss out. Make sure you have the right garment on. Make sure that your garment is white. Amen. Don't, don't, don't come dressed up in any other way. Well, I got my garment on. I got the garment of Pentecost on. No, no. Pentecost had it stay. Do it still. Do we still uh, acknowledge Pentecost? Yeah. People will be saved in Passover. People be filled with the Holy Spirit, but they got to go on. God want to empower you with the Spirit of God that you may rise up, that you may rise up to walk in to your inheritance. So you got to put great value on your life. If God put great value on your life, he was that perfect sacrifice. How much more do we got to pay attention to this word? 
Amen. You got a hundredfold, you got sixty, and you got thirty. A lot of people want to live out of the thirty. But in saying that this morning, you know the tree is full of sap. <laughs> it just tells me the nutrients and all the vitamins and the juice that circulates through the tree. It's like a banana tree. It has to have these elements for only one thing. Hear this this morning. All the nutrients and everything is like a cycle within the tree. What's it doing? It's going to cause something to happen. The sap goes to one thing. It goes to the fruit that it may absorb all the nutrients that is within the banana tree. I need more of the Spirit of God to dwell in me. Everything that he has, all the vitamins, all the power, all the strength for me to rise up, I know it's circulating through my body that I, that I may, that I may not waver that I may not miss the mark, that I may stand firm, that I may be solid in the Word of God. That's what cedar tree means. It means to be firm. It needs to be strengthened. It needs to be strong in the way that you and I hear the Word of God. You know, we preachers today preach everything under the sun. Get above the sun, that it's spirit to spirit, face to face, mouth to mouth, that he may breathe the he may breathe the word of God into you this morning, that you may be fresh with the word. Not only uh, in the morning that I'm fresh in the morning, in the evening I'm fresh. I've been provided food that will sustain me in the land. He's in a famine. You and I right now on planet Earth, the whole nation, the whole nation is shut down. It's like a famine. But you know what I want to say this morning? That even in the famine, God will provide. God always provides for the man of God. He has, he, has, he has been faithful from the end to the start. That's the God we serve. But what are you saying, Pastor Anthony? Well, when you go to 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8, and it says this, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise! Arise! That means to stand. When you're standing, you're ready to move forward. But today, and it's sad to say, many are not standing in the things of God. Now, I don't, I don't think that word's for me. I don't, I don't think that's of God. We have the concept, when God speaks to us, we analyze the word of God. But you know the prophet Elijah, he just obeyed the word of God. He didn't, he didn't question God. He didn't say, well, if I move to this other place, well, who's going to provide? See, we come in that unbelief. We don't enter in what God has for us. And sad to say, the church are just uh, struggling to get through. But the men of God that are hearing this word, they already are rising. They are standing firm. They are standing firm in the word of God. And you know, in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 13, others mocked and said, they are full of the new wine. And we heard about the mocking spirit. The greater the level the word is, you have that mocking spirit. So I don't think that's God. I don't think it's God. God wouldn't do that. Well, tell God back in the days of Noah, 
when it said in the word of God, Noah would have been pulling his hair out saying, it's going to rain. No one took notice of him. Rain speaks about true teachings of God. Get ready, it's going to rain. But everyone done their own thing. But that day came and the door was shut. We are now entering into the narrow gate. You got an option. I don't care who you sit under. I don't care what church you go to. It don't bother me. But if you ain't sitting under rain and true teaching of the word of God, you're in trouble. If you do not know the signs that we're in, you're in trouble. Because this is the day that God's opened this door. God is going to deal with sin in the house. I read a bit of history of w William Seymour. He used to sit outside the church. He was a black man. And what he would do, he would sit in, and when flesh entered the house, he used to hit the floorboard. Flesh is operating. Flesh is operating in the house of God. When flesh is operating, you can't produce life. And there are many, many, sad to say, are operating, out, operating in the soulish realm, feeding God's people. They are abusing the church with words. God said this, God said this. Sometimes prophecy can operate in the, in the soulish realm. Prophesy this, prophesy. But you know what? The man of God was so in tune with the Spirit of God when God says, arise, stand firm. Now you're going somewhere else. You know what, church? We're going somewhere else. We're going to the kingdom. Let your kingdom be established in us. He's talking about you and I this morning. We are the church of the living God. He's building a kingdom within you. Amen. Different boundaries, different rules. This kingdom is going to be holy. This kingdom will have no gray hairs. This kingdom will have no, no default in it. Because it's going to be a glorious church. Glory speaks of character. We're going to have that glorious character permeate through us. Amen. I want to encourage you. The white garments were worn at the Feast of Tabernacle. And I want to encourage you this morning. You know, get ears to hear, eyes to see. Our eyes go to Seraphim. <laughs> he had to move. Why did he have to move? The man of God knew the time to go. He knew the time of his visitation. The book was about to dry up. People will always stay in their, in their, in their church boundaries. Though it has no life of the Spirit of God, they will still hang on to be faithful to man. But the man of God, he heard the prophetic word of God. He says, my God is Jehovah. My God is my provider. Even if I leave this place and everything goes dried up, my God will provide for my journey. That's how the concept, that's how we got to see things in the spirit of God. When there's a famine right now on the land, my God will provide. My God will surely feed me. My God will comfort me. My God will empower me to be sustained in the midst of famine. And I want to encourage you. Don't miss your day of visitation. And a lot of the shepherds, and that word visitation that speaks of bishop and overseers, those that are in charge of God's work. And I say to you today, the kings of the earth, don't miss your day of visitation. Warn your people to go through the narrow gate. 
that leads to life, to bring them into sonship, to bring them into their inheritance. Don't just preach the same thing over and over and there's no life of the Spirit of God in it. Echoblock means the glory has moved. The glory has moved. He's moved over into tabernacle. When the children came out of, out of Egypt, he was, he was cloud by day, fire by night. In other words, the word directed them in the path to go. Fire speaks about this refiner's fire. He's coming behind to burn every dross in your life this morning. He's coming behind me and he said, as you, as you allow me to burn the dross in your life. Ministers today are just tickling the ears of God's people with everything and everything they say. They gravitate because you know why? They are comfortable in where they sit. Get out of the boat. Peter did it. God says, if you're not, if you're not getting rain over your life, rain speaks about teaching. Rain te speaks about a washing of the wound. God wants to clean your wound that he may impregnate you with the seed word. Oh, you know, Pastor, I've got the word. Yeah, but you might be looking out of the, in a carnal mind. That's the problem. This thing is all about spirit. You know, this word was written not for the world. It was written for the priesthood. They were guidelines for the priesthood to come into holiness. Everything that God wrote, it was for the church. That's why Paul says, he said, my greatest concern is the church. It's not all these little works popping up here and there. They're, they're rebellion against the word of God. There's, there's only one kingdom. There's only one rule that when the prophetic is blowing over the churches, over the sacrifice, we've got to assemble to hear what God is saying. God provided for that nation to come out of bondage. Egypt means to limit God. Sometimes we can limit God what, uh, and he wants to do something. He wants to provide. He wants to give you a better life in him. Amen. Don't take this word as any uh, judgment this morning, but take it. The man of God, he heard the voice. Amen. And that's what you and I have got to do. Seek the word. Seek the word. And you'll find him. Pursue him and you'll find life. A lot of times we just take everything on. Oh man, that was a good message. Man, I enjoyed this morning. We jumped around, we did backflips. No, it's not about doing backflips. It's about hearing truth. Oh man, I was glad when that pastor prophesied. It just, it just tingled me. No, no. Prophecy comes by the way of the Spirit of God. When you know it's from God, you will know. And you will know if it's coming out of flesh too. It's stimulating what? The flesh. The flesh gets excited. Well, why don't we get excited what God is going to do for you and I? Be filled. That's what that word means, sap. Have all the nutrients, have all the vitamins of the Holy Spirit that I may bear much fruit in his kingdom this morning. Without him, we can do nothing. Without him, we cannot produce. Without rain, we can't have production. Without rain, we become dried up prunes sitting in the house of God. No life of the Spirit of God. Ichabod means the glory has departed from the house. You're the house of God. We as Christians should have the vitality of the Holy Spirit. And I like it where it says in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11. Hearing the word is brilliant. And Hebrews 11, you know, it says this. It says, a high authority. Shema means to hear, but you've got to hearken to obey. 
three elements. You can hear the word, but hearken to the word that is coming now and to obey it. A lot of people hear it, but they don't hearken to the word to obey it. That's the danger we live in. But the man of God, he heard the voice. The prophet of God, he knew to go to the place. Go to Selfak. He knew the time of his visitation. Everything's drying up. And you know, a lot of people stay in a dry place and the clouds already moved. There are people, churches are singing, we need another Pentecost. No, you don't. You need to get up, stand up, and move on into tabernacle because that's where the glory dwells. Glory speaks of fruit, character. I need the glorious character of him this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's no other like him this morning. He is brilliant in all his ways. He's marvelous in his ways. His works are marvelous this morning. The work that he's doing in the church, in you and I this morning, it is a marvelous work. He's preparing, he's cleaning the church up that he may present. Hear this this morning that he may present to his father the bride that is adorned and has made herself ready. If you're not making yourself ready, he's not going to accept you. He's not going to accept a worn-out bride, worn out, no life of the Spirit of God. He's not going to present that bride. There's no life of Christ. He's going to, he's going to present a glorious a glorious bride. That's what he's longing for. Amen. So you've got to go through the process. We had Pentecost. Pentecost was there to empower you to move on. And that's what I want to encourage you this morning. This word is a word of encouragement. I'm going to my destiny. I'm going where my Lord is. Amen, the children of Israel. God provided that. God provided. If God can provide there in that time and season, he's going to provide in this hour that we're in. It's an hour that he's going to clean you and I up that we may go to life. Nothing else is going to matter. It's not your... It's not your nominations. It's not anything to do with that. You're going to, to a place that there's only one king, one rule, one head. We're not going to have all heads dominate. There's only one head of the church. It is Christ. Everything is within him. And God is not going to withhold those that are going to pursue him. Whatever you desire, God will fill you with. And that's what Pastor was talking about, that cycle of that banana tree. Every vitamin, everything that is attached to the root. Whatever's in the root of that banana tree, if it's got no water, well, you're going to have small bananas. But if it's got irrigation, water flowing under the earth, it's going to produce beautiful bananas. That's like you and I. When I'm planted beside the streams of life, all I can do is produce fruit. The book of Revelation speaks of that. There are trees that are planted beside the river. You know what? They produce fruit every month. That's what God wants you and I, to be a tree that can produce fruit, character. The fruit of the Spirit of God. Systems will dry up the bone. You can't produce in that system. And people will, they will be so lo loyal to their, nom uh, to their churches and they're dying. Spiritual dying of the things of God. You search out. 
you search out this word. Lord, that, the, that I may have the eyes of understanding your word. Holy Spirit, come and be my teacher and counselor. Teach me of your ways that I may know you. But we close up our Bible, take it home, leave it on the fridge. Come next Sunday, bring Bible. Don't open it. Got no interest. No interest to open this word that is a lie. We are so busy doing everything else. We haven't put value on our life. Jesus did. He said, Father, send me. Not my will be done, but let your will be done. It's the season we're in. It's a good season for those that are entering into the narrow way. For some, it's disaster. Don't come back down from the rooftop. I have no need to go back to Pentecost. I've been through that feast. God wants you to stay up that you may get fresh rain, fresh revelation of his word. And that's what Pastor wants to encourage you this morning. If he can provide Elijah, the man of God. But let's go back to Seraphim. It means to be refined and purged. In Zechariah 13 verse 9, this is what it says. I will bring one third. The fire will refine them as silver is refined. And I will test as gold is tested. And they will call on my name. And I will answer them. And I will say, this is my people. <laughs> you get that? It's not your pastor. It's not your bishops. It's not your oversiders. No, it's the Lord will say this. He will say, this is my people. See, approval doesn't come. It comes at the end. It comes at the place of testing. I approved you. Thy good and faithful servant. Enter in. Enter into what? What I have for you. You already entered in to the narrow gate. And what God has for you weighs out everything else that you have left. Don't cry about what you left. Rejoice what you're going to get. Sonship. I'm going after to be a son. I'm going after for the things of the high calling. I'm going for my goal. And all this is going to come intimate. You're going to walk alone. But he's there to provide in your walk. He's going to sustain you that you may be strengthened with the word of God to go through. But you've got you to search him out. You've got to find life. You've got to have the vitamins and the nourishment of the Holy Spirit strengthen you to go through the narrow gate. No one else said, no one's going to be at the door opening it. You've got to enter in yourself. You have the ability to go beyond what you have now. A lot of them are sick and they're starving. They're poor in spirit. And they will hold on to man's tradition of teaching that is drying them up like a dry prune. And they're so dry, uh, they don't know how to laugh. They don't know how to sing and worship. But there's a day that the joy of the Lord is my strength. The psalmist said, Though I go through the night of distress, though I go through all the problems, but you know what? Morning's coming. Morning's coming. A new day is a dawning. Amen. I'm breaking through in the things of God. It's a new day. That's where that's that's the uh, that's the urgency that Pastor Anthony is saying. It's a new day. Don't hold on to something that has made you poor, made you uh, a wreck, made you uh, a distress and that. Why hold on to it? 
What listen to man? Get ears to hear, eyes to see the prophetic word that is trumpeting over the earth this morning. God is endowing you with fresh revelation that you may quickly move in to, to your inheritance this morning. And I want to encourage you. Don't hold on to something. Don't hold on to something that is killing you. It's robbing you of your inheritance. That's why I say to my people, don't put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in me. Put your trust in God this morning. Your helper, your refuge, your tower of strength this morning. And that's what I want to encourage the church. This man of God, he knew the place was about to dry up. People are staying in places that that dry. There's no more life of the Spirit of God. They hear the same message that was preached in the 70s and they're still holding on to it. Get some fresh insight of the Word. Ah, oh, Pastor, will this day happen? Yes, it will. God cannot lie. He's the Spirit of truth. If God said there's a Passover, if He said there's a feast of Pentecost, Surely he would not lie and say, there's another feast, Feast of Tabernacle. That's the ultimate feast. That's why Pastor said, we are gonna, we're going to be walking in, uh, in the, the white linen, righteousness. And you know that garment is only worn in the Feast of Tabernacle on special occasion. And I want to encourage you this morning. Everything about God, you know, so beautiful. You know, the narrow way speaks about many tribulations to enter in. Well, your, your great tribulation is yourself. You're confused. You're hearing this doctrine, that doctrine, every wind of doctrine. That's why it's so wide and narrow, and many go down to the road of destruction. You know, they're stimulated by man. They believe man more than the word. I've got to say that. What is the Spirit of God saying in the book of Revelation? Hear what the Spirit of God is saying now. Don't listen what man say. God knows the end before he knows the beginning. You've got to get a hold of this word. Undetermined. If sometimes you've got to be like the man of God and you've got to get up from the place that is drying up. If you're going you're gonna to sit there, well, you're going to be a dry prune. Sad to say that. There's no more life in the prune. It's dried up. And a lot of people will stay in a place that is dry. They will stay and they will give their support to ministers. And all, all they're doing is giving a five-minute sermon, you know. No, no. This is a journey of great great importance it determines either you shut out or you're in and that's the sad thing in the book of revelation it speaks about that the, uh, it says to the angel of the lord don't measure the outer court don't measure it that's a type of people playing around never took it serious same as the day of noah only eight went in. New beginning. Jacob wrestled with the angel of God till till a dawn broke. Start starting a new day. What's your name? Jacob. Now I'll change it to Israel. You know what Israel held me? They're not talking about buildings over Jerusalem. No, those that will rule and reign with God. We're going to have to change our character, thinking, oh, you know what? I'm a child of the Lord. I'm going to rule and reign with him. And it's going to happen. That's where your authority lies in it. It lies in him. So this morning, take this in love. And you know, uh, I'm so glad I want to share this uh, in the book of Revelation. You know, uh, you know church, these are urgent days. These are days to get yourself ready. You know, when I married my wife, I didn't get there and I dressed her. 
she adorned herself. She adorned herself for that special occasion. You know what? You and I have got to adorn ourselves with the ornaments of God. That I'm making myself ready for my husband. We are the woman. We are the church. We are the bride. We've got to adorn ourselves with the precious things of God. It's going to happen, church. And I like this in the book of Revelations. You know, I, 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 you know there, are, there are, in verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 9, it says, hear this. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all the nation, tribes, and people, and tongue, standing before what? The throne, and before the Lamb of God, clothed with white robes. Ha, 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 ha. You hear that? White robes. <laughs> it's, no, it's no other robe. It's going to be like this. You're going to be clothed in whiteness this morning. A white robe with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. What a day! What a day, church! And oh, have you got reference there? Yeah, let's go to the book of John, and I'll show you in the book of John, in chapter 12 here, I'm getting excited. There's a day that I'm adorning myself for a great day to celebrate. Salvation has come to his people. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I don't want to be a, I don't want to be half saved. There's no such thing being half saved. You need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And uh, John chapter 12, verse 12, it says, this is it. This is the crunch. The next day, the great multitudes, multitudes that had come to the feast, come to what feast? The feast of tabernacle. Come to this feast. You're about to be clothed in whiteness. You're beginning to be clothed with pureness and everything else, the brilliancy, the brightness of his word. And uh, what, a, what a day. And it says, has come to the feast, and they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. And they took the branches, palm trees, and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Ha oh, oh, ha, oh, ha man, hallelujah. We're gonna celebrate. We're gonna cross over in, in such a cell. Palm trees speaks about victory. The overcomers, those that overcome their beastly natures to one end to this day that we can celebrate with him, that we can rejoice in victory because of him and him alone. Amen. Hallelujah. This is your day of visitation. This is your opportunity to get real. It's your day that God is trying to speak into you. You know, uh, I thought about it in a funny way. You know, everyone's waiting for a trumpet. Well, if you can't hear the prophetic, how can you hear a trumpet? If you haven't got ears to hear the prophetic word of God, well, how can you hear the trumpet that's going out in space? Because you know what? You're not going to hear that. Because God is trumping a message right now to the church of the living God. Trumpet men of God that are carrying the prophetic word and trumping it over the sacrifice, over you and I, that we may get ready. Amen. But I, I, I had a funny thought. You know, I thought, well, how are they going to hear the trumpet? They can't even hear the prophetic because they got no ears to hear the prophetic word of God. And Matthew that speaks about the dull of hearing this word. They went to sleep. They don't care. Like the people in Noah's day didn't care. The day of the, uh, when God said it's going to flood the earth, they didn't really care. But when the door closed, then they woke up. Too late, the door's closed. Same principle here in the Day of Atonement. You don't go through the process. You don't go after your inheritance. 
you know what's going to happen at the end? The door will close. You should have, could have, would have, people. You didn't give time to hearken to the voice. You didn't obey the word of God. This is, this is Christian today. What feast? What feast? What feast? We had Passover, we had Pentecost. What feast? They're asking, what feast? Well, it's the feast of tabernacle. God wants you to come in the narrow way. And you know, in that celebration, this is what they sung. You know, uh, in Psalms, uh, Psalms 118, look what it says. The first verse. But you read all the scriptures, and it speaks about, I will not put my trust in man. But verse 1, I love this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And they used to, when Jesus rode into the city, the priests used to quote the Psalms. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. We're flat out giving thanks to the Lord in such a time and an hour and hour that God wants to transform you into his image that you've got to go through the process. When you're going through testing time, when you're going through tribulations or trouble, oh, give thanks to the Lord. He is good for his mercy endureth forever. His kindness, his faithfulness to his church, it endures forever. I'm going to a place that I'm going to get transformed in the likeness of him this morning, but I've got to go through the steps. I can't be a kangaroo hopping from Passover into Tabernacle. No, you've got to go through the road. You've got to go through the map, the Word of God. God requires you to go through the steps that He has ordered you and I. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. God will order your steps to go through this narrow gate. Lose yourself. God wants you to lose yourself. He don't want anything of Pastor Anthony. There's no value in me. You know, um, all my uh, teaching and all my thing. No. He wants you to be empty that he may fill you with the vitamins of the Holy Spirit. Fill you over and over. Press down everything. When you're pressed, you're overflowing that you may touch others. You know, people, people will serve man. People will, you know, it says this, in verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than put your confidence in man. Amen. There it is. I don't put my trust in man. If I'm in a famine, I don't put my trust in man. I've got to put it in the confidence of the Lord. He is my provider. Elijah, the prophet, he knew that. Go to Seraphach and a widow. The little, the little she has, she will provide. And you know, that widow, her, her son was sick. And the man of God's coming and saying, can you provide me a meal? She would have been, you know, I know me, oh, look, I would have been up in arms. But he was bringing her through a process. You know, the little the church has, get out of that. You're about to dry. Some have already dried up. Get out of that area and come into life because he will sustain you in the midst of the famine. If you can take this word this morning, if you can just sit alone like the Elijah, the prophet, he provided for me, he gave, he gave me a raven and the greatest thing, I had his presence. That's what Moses said. He said, Lord, for me to move, I need your presence. Lord, on this journey, I need you to go before me. Here, here it is. The word will give you direction. See it in the light of the spirit of God. See it to spirit to spirit, mouth to mouth. Breathe in the thing that will give you vitality and strength this morning. This is not, this is not, oh, we're gonna live here for another 100,000 years, no. This thing's about to close. What are you doing? Shepherds, what are you doing? Kings of the earth, what are you doing? Are you searching this out? 
Are you getting true revelation? Have you got the light on to see in the spirit? I challenge you as oversiders, bishops, if you only digging up something that has no substance, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna fill them up. I need substance of this word that I may be filled with all the dimensions of His kingdom. In verse 17, it says this. I love this. I hear Pastor Brian said it one day, and I was so. Uh, so excited because it, 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 I can see what he's saying there. I shall not die, but I'll live, and I will declare the works of the Lord. You know what? I'm not destined for the grave. I'm destined for life. Resurrection life sits within you. You just got to activate it. But you got to have the right environment. I will not die. I will not die. Because the word of God, you got to believe this word. And I want to encourage you this morning. And the word of the Lord said, I shall not die, but live. And I will declare the works of the Lord this morning. That's what Pastor Anthony is saying this morning. Elijah, if he would have stayed there, he would have missed his day of visitation to move. God already had someone to provide for him as he journeyed on. Don't you think God knows when you take a step to him, he has provision, he has his presence, he has his word, he has the Holy Spirit to take you through. It's your choice this morning. Yeah, but Pastor, I do all the good works, even your good works won't get you in. Yeah, but I love the Lord. Yeah, you only love him on your terms. Real love, real love is like Jesus. He laid his life that you may receive that love. That's a person who loves you so much is the Lord. I'm not in tradition of man. I'm not in programs. We have more programs in the church. It, it saddens me and it doesn't bring fruit. Because the Holy Spirit is left outside the house instead of coming in, creating an atmosphere that I may be transformed. So this morning, get ears to hear, eyes to see what the Spirit of God is saying right now to the church. Don't be a one-day wonder. Don't be those that build up their own little church. That's coming down in this mood. Those that are preachy and have no understanding, trying to preach this word from Pentecost and have no standing of tabernacle, you have no right to speak. Only men of God, women of God that have searched this out and call, call on his name. He shall give you the words to speak. That's why Caleb said, he said, quieten the people. Sometimes we got to say to the people, shut up. Sad to say, I've got to say, shut up. I have the word to go up. In other words, I have the word to enter into my inheritance. So this morning, sometimes we got to speak to the storms. Sometimes the storm we think is the natural storm but there's a storm that's raging in God's house because of the teaching of men that abuse the church with carnal words and trying to impregnate them with carnal words. Carnal words will never ever produce the character of God. It's only him and him alone. Re receive the word of truth this morning in love that I may be grounded in love, that I may be grounded in him, that everything that is in the cornerstone, that I may absorb it through me, that I may be a tree of righteousness. Amen.
So this morning, Pastor Anthony is going to close. Please don't get offended of the word. But even Jesus said, they are offended of my word. Take it in love this morning. Settle the issue within. Study thyself approved unto God. Go through it. Look out the word. Say, Holy Spirit, come and shed truth. The Holy Spirit don't know anything else but truth of the word. He is all truth. He is all holiness. And that's why Jesus said, I send the comforter. He's going to comfort you through the storms. He's going to bring you through the storm. I'm going to cross over into this day of my inheritance. So I want to say this morning, God bless you, love you. Uh, we'll have other speakers coming during the week, but stay in tune. So I want to say this morning, God bless you, I love you. Um, please take this as, as a challenge. He will provide when there's a famine. Amen. He has never let us down. So I'm going to close and pray. Father, I thank you this morning. That, Lord God, everything I said, Lord, let it be an encouragement for those that are hearing the word of the Lord for such a time as that. And I pray, Lord, that people will never miss their day of visitation, the opportunity to become a son. Father, every one of us, individual, will have to make a decision to go to the place of the narrow gate that I may find and enter in to you this morning. Father, I thank you for the brilliancy of your word that shines in a dark area in my life. And Father, you called us out of darkness that we may be come into light. Father, this morning, I ask let your love let your goodness and mercy be upon this nation, Lord. Though we feel like it's a famine, though things are closed up, but you know what, Lord, heaven is open. All we got to do is ask and call upon the name of the Lord. Father, we ask, Lord, today, Lord, the nation all around the world is affected and Lord, we need to come back to the cornerstone that it can unlock something to annihilate this virus, Lord. You sent your word, Lord. Let it go through the nations of the world that it may annihilate this, this virus, O oh God, that people may come back and know it is only the Lord that brought brought healing brought deliverance to our nation so father i ask this morning let your will be done over our nations and over the world father i thank you now and i ask this in the lovely name of jesus amen god bless you this morning